Hi everyone, I hope you guys are all well. It's a gloomy day here in England, so it was Sunday, so it's time as usual to talk about the book I have been reading. I am feeling so much better. It's been a really stressful week this week, so my reading pattern's been slightly a bit off. Um, but I have persevered through and I have gotten through Watership Down by uh, Richard Adams. This is my mum's copy from 1979. She gave it to me and I absolutely love um, the fact that it's my mum's and it's, you know, I'm going to treasure this. Um, but yes, so I have loved the story of Watership Down thanks to the animated film since I was a kid. And it's a running joke in my family that um, it kind of scarred me. <laughs> As it were, it really terrified me and such. Um, but it is a really quite terrifying film. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but it's a running joke in my family that if you want to make me cry, like instantly, you just have to start seeing bright eyes from the film, and I will start crying. And it's still true to this day. Um, so I went into this book, obviously knowing the story because I know the film so well as a kid. Um, but then at the same time, thinking about it from an adult perspective, because I've said it so many times that film adaptations and such can change elements. It can take stuff out. It can put stuff in. You know all of that kind of stuff. So I kind of went into it unsure of what was exactly from the book and what wasn't. And it, having read it now, it's, it's not bad an adaptation at all. Um, but I found something very interesting. <laughs> what and I wasn't expecting, and I don't know if I need to have a second read, but I couldn't connect to the book at all. I was literally just like reading it because I felt like I needed to persevere, I needed to get through, but I had no kind of connection with it. And I don't know if it's because I've, I've been so busy or whatever. And as I said, maybe I need a, a second time round to try it because I thought, oh, a, a story that I've loved since I was a kid. I'm really going to enjoy this. I'm really going to connect to it. It's going to be a really great read. And I was sat there evening after evening going, I'm reading the words, but I'm not absorbing them. I'm not. It's not hitting me. And I don't know why. So, with that opener of a review, um, <laughs> watched it down in case you've not read it or watched the film or anything like that. Um, it's about a group of rabbits, and the two main rabbits are Hazel and Fife, uh, Fiverr, who are um, brothers. Hazel's the eldest, Fiverr is the youngest. And Fiverr has this um, ability to be able to kind of foresee the future. And he foresees an attack on their their group um, where they live, and uh, he sees this you know the foreboding of the hill flowing with blood with their blood from this attack. So they kind of get various rabbits together and say, "Okay, look, um, Five has had this vision. Do you believe us? And if so, we're going to leave, and you're welcome to come with us." And it's about the group of rabbits who leave the other rabbits that they encounter and such and where they end up being um and really focuses a lot on the relationship between hazel and and fiverr now the thing about this book was that it was written because uh richard adams had told this story to his to his daughters um you know it's a, a because they asked him to make up a story and, you know, to tell them, like, on a long car journey. I think that's that's how the, 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 the story goes of how we came up with Watership Down. And they liked it so much, they said, oh, you really should write it down. So we wrote it down and it got published and it's been this classic ever since. So with the way that it is written, it's quite simplistic, but then it's a children's, it's designed as a children's book. So I'm not saying, oh, because as an adult, it has to be written in this really complex manner and all this lot in order to for me to, to appeal to me. Not saying that at all. 
Um, because you know, I love you know young adult fiction books and you know the Harry Potter books and hell they weren't written for adults um but there's a big adult adult audience there so it, it's not to do with that it's I can't I can't actually put it in words as to what it is um the what he yeah he's written it in a in a simplistic manner but then I feel like that throughout the course of this book because of various characters that you meet uh along the way in their in their group and other groups and you know various other other characters that you meet along the way that there's like a hierarchy state um there's you know different statuses of the rabbits and who you should fear uh especially a character you should really fear because he is really messed up rabbit um uh, you know there there's a system and you feel that system very clearly in the film but i couldn't feel it in the book and that kind of baffled me i don't know if it's just because the way it was written or as i said my mind was not quite in the right mindset for it um it is a lovely story is a it's a lovely novel i just felt no connection to it um there is a quirky thing that he does in that the rabbits have their own language and so he puts um when you get references to it um he puts all of these like little notes at the bottom of the page to explain um what these words mean their whole uh, backstory of how they were established which animals say those things and such then as you carry on through you know you've got that information um so yeah so you have to get around to the little language um of the rabbits but it's only it's only actually a few words so i don't necessarily see why he felt the need to put in this language of the rabbits when it's only a few words yeah i'm not sure about that um and yeah I th he d he does also do things which are, is quite helpful in that he'll put at points where it's required um oh, well, at the beginning of the book he gives you uh, a map of where um fiverr and hazel live and everything and tells you where at each chapter the different events um gives you scales and all that lot to let you know how far it is and then when you've got a certain situation like there is um this big scene to do with a railway track um and uh, a rabbit called bigwig uh he puts another map to let you know exactly um what what they're doing which is really helpful and i suppose obviously for as this is a, a you know a child's story uh, it helps a child to understand um so to give you an example of this I just want to read a bit from a chapter uh, to to show you kind of the the words that the different language that comes up and also his writing style. Um, so this is the beginning of part three. Uh, it's chapter thirty, so it's a new journey. So, with the exception of Buckthorn and addition of Bluebell, the rabbits set off from the southern end of the beach hangar early the next morning where those who had left Sandalford with Hazel five weeks before. Hazel had said nothing more to persuade them, feeling they would be better simply to leave things to set in his favour. He knew that they were afraid, for he was afraid himself. Indeed, he guessed that they, like himself, could not be free from the thought of F... 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 <laughs> See, these words, it even slipped me up, does that? Um... So yeah, they could not be free from the thought of Ephrathah and its grim Ulsla, but working against their fears with nothing longing and need to find more find more does and the knowledge that there was plenty of, of does in Ephrathah. So yeah, so the, the doe situation is because that's the female rabbits, because um, they realise that they're all male. So if they're going to go off and <laughs> establish a new place, they're going to need females so to help them out. So this is why they're saying they need to find does. Then there was their sense of mischief. All rabbits love to trespass and steal, and when it comes to the point, very few will admit that they were afraid to do so, unless, like Buckthorn or Strawberry on this occasion, they know that they are not fit and that their bodies may let them down in a pinch. 
Again, in speaking about this secret, pl secret plan, Hazel had aroused their curiosity. He had hoped that, with Fiverr behind him, he could lure them with hints and promises, and he had been right. The rabbits trusted him, and Fiverr, who had got them out of Sandalford before it was too late, crossed the Enborn in the common, taken Bigwig out the wire, found the warren of the Downs, made an alley of Kia, and produced two does against all odds. There was no telling what they, what they would do next, but they were evident, evidently up to something. And since Bigwig and Blackberry seemed to be confident in doing, uh, confidently in on it, no one was ready to say that he would rather stay out, especially since Hazel had made it clear that anyone who wished could remain at home and welcome, implying that if he was so poor spirited as to choose to miss the exploit, they could do without him. So, as you can see, it's kind of summarised what they've been so far. Um, it's explained, you know, the situation, the does, and how people, are, you know, the rabbits are feeding and everything. But it just feels kind of bland. Um, and as I said, I, I, as I was reading it, I was just thinking, I'm just reading words directly off the page, and I'm not feeling them. I'm not absorbing them. So I think what I'm going to do. I'm not saying, you know, every single book um, I have to have something positive to say because I certainly haven't <laughs> been positive about every book on this channel. But I think I this is the kind of book which for me, um, uh, uh, my reading, you know, the way that I am, I think if I read it the second time round, I will appreciate it more. It's just that initial going in. I it, I just couldn't connect, and then that made the rest of the book flat for me. So now that I know his writing style, I know the stuff about you know the language um, references and everything. I know he, what he's trying to say. The second time around, it'd be easier, but this initial one, it was a bumpy ride. It, it I didn't feel comfortable on that ride. Um, but I would definitely give it another go. I'm determined that um, I will see it again in the light. I'm not giving up on Watership Down. I've read it, but I'm not giving up how I'm feeling right now about it. So maybe next year, I'm going to give it another go, uh, another reread. It, well, not another reread because that implies I've already had a reread. <laughs> another read. <laughs> It'll be the first reread. Um, and I want to see how I feel about this another time round. So I'm really curious um, if you guys have read this, what you thought about it. If you kind of encountered the same thing as me. Because I understand why it's a classic. I understand the story because I've loved it since I was a child. I just can't understand how I can't connect to the book. It's really strange, but as I said, I'm going to give it another go. I'm not giving up on Watership Down. Um, so when it comes to the film, like I said, I, I love the animated one since I was a kid. I still absolutely love this film. It is, it captures the darkness of the book well I feel. Um, it's not afraid to go there. Um, even though it's a U certificate, it is not a U certificate film whatsoever. There's quite a lot of blood and kind of gore and um, you've got a bird that swears. Uh, <laughs> it's not afraid to go dark um, at all so i would say this is not a use certificate film this is like a p this is a pg at least um but i would recommend it the 2018 adaptation the bbc did i haven't had a chance to try and rewatch it this week um but i believe it's on netflix so i might um give that a go later um you know try again because i i tried to watch that and i got distracted by the animation and i couldn't connect to it at all um it it just it felt a bit dry to me and i gave up um about it was either three quarters of the way through or the entire way through the first episode. And there were, I think it was like four or five. Um, so, yeah, I just 
I went, no, this isn't working for me, and I didn't watch any more of it. So I'd like to, yeah, re retry watching the recent version, which I believe is on Netflix, and maybe next year pick up Watership Down again and give it a, another go. If you learn, when I'm in a better headspace as well, I may feel differently about it. Um, but I am glad that I've read it. I, I think it's a great story. I totally understand why people react to it the way that they do. I just had connection problems, but we'll see. In this Maybe, like I said, a year or so, I might feel a bit differently about it. I don't know. But yeah, there, there were my thoughts on Watership Down. Ooh, Watership Down. <laughs> Showing you the back cover, upside down, uh, by Richard Adams. And yeah, we'll see how we go. I couldn't find an audio book because I did wonder if an audio book might be a good idea to for me to read along with. Maybe that would help me connect more. Couldn't find one, or at least I couldn't find one in English. Um, <laughs> I was it was really the lot, and I, I couldn't find like a, a BBC radio drama or anything. I could find like German versions but not English versions. It sounds bizarre, I know, but, you know, that's what happened. Um, so, yeah, so I've got, I've got nothing else there to recommend audio-wise for you, um, but I would recommend the animated film one, but be aware that it's quite um, bloody and gory, and it has a swearing bird in it. Um, but there we go. Those are my thoughts. So have you read this book? I'd love to know what you think. You can leave me a comment in the comments box below. You can give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, tally up to your lady side. And uh, as announced previously, I am going to be reading The Handmaid's Tale next. Um, it's going to be dark, it's going to be hard, and I'm going to love every second of it, I can just tell. Um, and I've bought a few new books recently, which I'm so excited to share with you guys, especially one that I got today, which I have been dying to get hold of, and I got it for £4.50 at Tesco. Yes, uh, less than half price. Fantastic! Uh, but I will do a separate video for that um, when I come to do my review of Handmaid's Tale because at that point I've, I've finished the ones um, that I've already announced. So I will be back with my thoughts on the Handmaid's Tale as soon as I'm done. <laughs> Alright guys, bye!